Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. Now, on the YouTube side of the show, I am now only three subscribers short of 100, which doesn't sound like much, but it will qualify me for a personalized YouTube URL, which is key for marketing. So if you haven't subscribed, please be one of the three people to subscribe to me so I can get that URL. And I will then host a 100 subscriber, li subscriber live stream celebration on YouTube. In any case, I'd appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring where I sell t-shirts, coffee mugs, towels, and basically anything else I can fit my logo onto. But there's a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are things, links to all of these in my description box. Well... Once again, we have seen mass shootings in the United States, and this time they were particularly awful. Nothing I can say except that my deepest sympathies go out to both the victims and their families. Now, once again, leftists are calling for gun bans, not understanding that if they were implemented, this will absolutely trigger civil war. Once again, the right... They occasionally come up with an answer that seems kind of sane. In this case, in the form of President Trump noting that this seems to ultimately devolve to mental illness. But he doesn't go nearly far enough, and I'm going to in this episode. Now, the press is trying to make this the fault of President Trump, which is, of course, ridiculous. President Trump is no more to blame for this than Bernie Sanders was to blame for the left-wing nut job who shot up the congressional bas baseball ba uh, team practice. No more than Jodie Foster is to blame for John Hinckley's attempted assassination of Ronald Reagan. And that's who Hinckley said was to blame. He said he was trying to kill Reagan in order to curry favor with Foster. These things are not due to presidents. They're due to mental illness. And as the secondary motto of my show reads, nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. If you pay attention to this issue or any other issue in the press, then you have become a useful idiot and no matter where you stand on the issue. I think libertarians like myself have the right idea. We understand that personal protection cannot be delegated and that the only solution is to allow any man, woman, or responsible child to carry any kind of firearm that they wish for their own personal protection. However, it's worth noting that the base reason that these attacks occur, and President Trump has it partly right that there is major mental illness problems, but he misses the larger issue of why we see this mental illness, while we've not seen it before. The availability of guns and the kind of guns that we have is not a problem. In wars throughout all of American history, right up through the Vietnam War, soldiers returned from the battlefield with souvenir firearms taken from fallen enemies. My late father's gun collection includes a Japanese rifle that my grandfather brought back when he fought in the Pacific Theater in World War II. When my father was 12, and this would have been in the mid-1950s, he once bought a 22 caliber rifle by going to the local hardware store with a note from his father giving him permission to buy it. That's all he needed. Point of fact, they still sell them at uh, some uh, hardware stores. This is uh, the interior of a uh, Ace Hardware store. He bought this thing in the morning, he took it to school with him, and there was only one prohibition, and that was the insisted, and teacher insisted that he keep it in the cloakroom because it caused too much of a distraction in class because all the students wanted to look at it and handle it and were all excited and everything. Well, this was the norm. Children could bring guns to school and nobody was ever shot, not once. As late as the 1970s, you could purchase firearms through the mail from the Sears catalog. Sears sold millions of them, and yet we didn't see mass shootings. And until the early 1980s, firearms could be taken on any commercial airplane. You, and the only thing that you'd ever hear about it was if the flight attendant would ask if you wanted to restore your long gun, which was a shotgun or a rifle, up front as opposed to the overhead bin so that it wouldn't get damaged. Handguns weren't even commented on, and yet there were no mass shootings on airplanes. There were hijackings of aircraft, which caused the federal government to unconstitutionally strip Americans of their Second Amendment rights on aircraft. While this may have worked in the short term, it was ultimately disastrous. Because on September 11, 2001, 
Terrorists took advantage of unconstitutionally disarmed passengers to fly two aircraft into the Twin Towers, another into the Pentagon, and a third that crashed in Pennsylvania. Had any or all of these passengers been armed, then the terrorists would have been gunned down in a hail of lead from an unknown number of people from totally unknown directions. In fact, it's quite possible that knowing the futility of it, they would never even have attempted it. If Americans had not been unconstitutionally stripped of their rights, the Twin Towers would still be standing, and the more than 3,000 dead would still be alive. Clearly, the availability and kind of guns isn't the problem. The real problem is what we today call mental illness, though this is in fact something that's been with us throughout all of human history. You see, humans didn't evolve to live as we do today. Humans evolved to be nomadic hunter-gatherers who at best operated in small tribes made up of multiple family units. But unlike every other life form on Earth, human beings are sapient. We can say to ourselves, I think, therefore I am. We can think and we can plan and we can dream. And so we invented subsistence level farming in which families tended small tracts of land that allowed them to produce enough food and to eat and to trade with. These families socialized with other families during planned social events, typically centered around church events. But we were smart. We used science to expand the amount of land we could use with fewer people required to do the job. And at the time, we then came up with manufacturing. And with the Industrial Revolution, we started moving into cities. And that's where the problem started. We didn't evolve psychologically to live together in the massive groups found in cities. And this started us down a path of severe mental illness from which we all suffer and have suffered for generations. We were not psychologically evolved to live so densely. The most basic part of our minds are tuned to small groups of people that we know intimately from birth until death. Not to be constantly surrounded by a sea of humanity or total strangers. And this is made worse with the advent of computing, because we now rarely socialize. Anonymity has ma made our online behavior totally uncivil. Many of us now spend all of our time online, exposed to nothing but incivility. And so incivility is now accepted as our part of our general culture. We know very few people intimately, and certainly not from birth until death. While modern civilization is definitely a, te a testament to human ingenuity, it is not where our minds evolved to be. And we are all mentally ill because of it and have been for generations. Today, most of us live in massive cities packed together as tightly as possible because real estate is so limited with the psychological problem becoming worse with each passing year as real estate becomes more scarce and more expensive. We did not evolve to live as we do today. And because of this, we are all mentally ill, each and every one of us, and have been for generations. And some of us snap. Until the early 20th century, the problem with huge cities was alleviated by frontiers. Those of us who simply couldn't live in densely packed cities took to the frontiers where they could hunt or farm in small groups. Today, there are no frontiers left. Those of us who simply can't live in densely packed cities have nowhere to go, and sometimes they crack. And when they crack, they commit mass shootings using various excuses, lately white supremacy or fighting fascism in order to justify their actions. But in reality, they're simply people whose minds that were evolved to live in small groups of people whom they knew intimately from birth to death cannot cope with living in a way that they weren't evolved to live, and they crack. The only solution to this problem is to find new frontiers to which people can escape and live by themselves or in small group and thus avoid cracking. What many people don't know is that what the coasts in insultingly call flyover country actually consists of farmers and ranchers who tend tracts of land larger than either the New York or Los Angeles metro areas. And they do this with modern science. And in fact, most of them have degrees in, in, in agricultural science so that they can tend to these huge tracts of land. There are really are no more frontiers left in the United States. Our only real option is space, the final frontier. 
Space exploration is a literally endless frontier. But due to the limitations of speed of light and other general technical problems, it will be thousands of years before humanity loses the frontiers even in our own solar system. But there are some problems with space travel that I've discussed in my video, the problems with space travel, and you can find the link to that in my description box below. We need to know a lot more about what humans can do and what humans can survive before we can really get into space. However, it's obviously now totally imperative to solve these problems because to leave us with no frontiers means that more people living in ways that they were not evolved to live will crack and we will continue to see mass shootings. It is now an absolute imperative that NASA, the U.S. Space Force, and private companies such as SpaceX turn their attention to solving the problems with space travel that I talk about in my video, The Problem with Space Travel. It should become SpaceX's and NASA's primary goal to get as many Americans into space as possible and as quickly as possible. Whether that means the moon, Mars, the asteroid belt, or any other frontier we can find, we need to begin applying emptying our cities as soon as possible so that we could overcome the serious mental illness that we now all possess and have for generations, so that the weakest among us will not crack and start shooting up public places. But that's not going to happen instantly. So what can you do in the meantime? Well, there's only one thing that you can do, which is to accept the fact that personal protection cannot be delegated to buy a gun of your liking, become a proficient with it and carry it with you at all times so that the next time someone starts shooting up the place, they'll be killed by an unknown number of people from unknown directions before they have a chance to cause as much carnage as we've seen in the last week. And that is your only option. And to do otherwise, listen clearly, will trigger civil war. And that is all that I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of minds.